Helen of Troy, the face that launched a thousand ships. Imagine a beauty so powerful that it could ignite a war, destroy an entire city, and change the fate of nations. This was Helen of Troy, the woman whose allure sparked one of the greatest conflicts in ancient history. Her story is filled with love, betrayal, bravery, and tragedy. But was she truly the villain of this epic tale, or just a victim of forces beyond her control? Join us as we journey back to the ancient world, where gods, kings, and warriors fought for honor, love, and destiny, and where one woman's face launched a thousand ships. Chapter 1. The Birth of Helen Once upon a time in ancient Greece, a king named Tyndarius ruled the land of Sparta. He was married to a beautiful queen named Leda. One day, Leda received a visit from the god Zeus, who had taken the form of a swan. Not long after this, Leda gave birth to two daughters, Helen and Clytemnestra, and two sons, Castor and Pollux. Helen was not an ordinary child. From the moment she was born, people noticed her beauty. Her hair was golden like the sun, her skin was soft and pale, and her eyes were as bright as the stars. Many believed that Helen's beauty came from her divine father, Zeus. As she grew up, Helen's beauty became even more breathtaking. People from all over Greece spoke of her, and her name became famous. But with beauty came attention. Many men wanted to marry Helen. Kings and princes from distant lands came to ask for her hand in marriage. Helen was not only beautiful, but also kind and wise. She was loved by her family and admired by everyone in Sparta. However, Tyndarius, her father, worried about her future. He knew that choosing a husband for Helen would be difficult. If he chose one man, the others might become angry and start a war. To avoid this, Tyndarius made all the men promise that they would respect Helen's choice and protect her, no matter who she married. Helen eventually married a strong and brave king named Menelaus. He was the ruler of Sparta and loved Helen deeply. Together, they lived in a grand palace, and their life seemed perfect. But destiny had something else in store for Helen. Chapter 2. The Arrival of Paris Far away from Sparta, in the city of Troy, there was a young prince named Paris. Paris was handsome and charming, and he was the son of King Priam of Troy. One day, Paris was invited to a grand feast hosted by the gods on Mount Olympus. There, three goddesses, Aphrodite, Hera, and Athena, asked him to make a difficult decision. Each of them wanted to be known as the fairest goddess, and they offered Paris gifts if he chose them. Hera promised him power and wealth, Athena promised wisdom and victory in battle, but Aphrodite promised him something different. She told Paris that if he chose her, she would give him the love of the most beautiful woman in the world. Paris, unable to resist, chose Aphrodite. Soon after, Paris traveled to Greece on a diplomatic mission. He arrived in Sparta, where he met King Menelaus and his beautiful wife, Helen. The moment Paris saw Helen, he remembered Aphrodite's promise. He believed Helen was the woman meant for him, and he quickly fell in love with her. Menelaus treated Paris with respect and kindness, welcoming him into his home. But Paris had other plans. With Aphrodite's help, Paris convinced Helen to leave Sparta and sail away with him to Troy. 
Some say Helen fell in love with Paris, while others believe she was under a spell. Either way, Helen left her husband and followed Paris to Troy, changing her fate forever. Chapter 3 The Outrage of Menelaus When Menelaus discovered that Helen was gone, he was heartbroken and furious. His beloved wife had been taken away by a foreign prince, and he knew that this would not only hurt him personally, but also bring shame to Sparta. Menelaus could not let this insult go unpunished. He quickly sought the help of his brother, Agamemnon, who was the king of Mycenae and one of the most powerful rulers in Greece. Agamemnon agreed to help Menelaus bring Helen back and punish the city of Troy. Together, they called upon the other Greek kings and heroes to join them in the fight against Troy. Among them were famous warriors like Achilles, Odysseus, and Ajax, who all swore to support Menelaus in his quest. The Greek kings remembered their promise to protect Helen, no matter who she married. Now, they gathered their armies and prepared to sail to Troy. Thousands of ships were built, and thousands of soldiers were ready to fight. This was the beginning of what would become one of the most famous wars in history, the Trojan War. Helen, meanwhile, was in Troy, living in the palace of Paris. Although Troy was a beautiful city with tall walls and strong towers, Helen's heart was not at peace. She missed her home in Sparta and often thought of Menelaus. Some days she wondered if leaving with Paris had been a mistake, but it was too late to go back now. Chapter 4 The Siege of Troy The Greek army arrived at the shores of Troy ready for battle. But Troy was a strong city with high walls and its people were brave. For nine long years the Greeks and Trojans fought each other. The war seemed never-ending and neither side could claim victory. During this time many heroes emerged. Achilles, the strongest of the Greek warriors, became famous for his bravery and skill in battle. Hector, the prince of Troy and brother of Paris, fought fearlessly to protect his city. The war was filled with moments of great courage, but also with sorrow and loss. Inside the city, Helen watched the battles from the walls of Troy. She saw the suffering and the destruction that her beauty had caused. Some of the people of Troy blamed her for the war, while others believed that it was the will of the gods. Helen felt torn between her love for Paris and her guilt for the pain that the war had brought. As the war dragged on, both sides became tired and desperate. The Greeks knew they needed to do something bold if they wanted to win. So, they came up with a clever plan that would change the course of the war forever. Chapter 5 The Wooden Horse Odysseus, the clever king of Ithaca, came up with a daring idea. He suggested building a large wooden horse and hiding Greek soldiers inside it. The Greeks would pretend to leave making the Trojans believe they had won the war. The wooden horse would be left as a gift for the gods, and the Trojans would bring it into their city as a sign of victory. The plan worked. The Greeks built the giant horse and hid their best warriors inside. Then they sailed away, leaving the horse on the shore. When the Trojans saw that the Greeks were gone, they celebrated. They brought the wooden horse into the city, 
thinking that the war was finally over. That night, while the Trojans were sleeping, the Greek soldiers quietly climbed out of the horse. They opened the gates of the city and let the rest of the Greek army inside. The Greeks attacked Troy, setting the city on fire and defeating the Trojans. Chapter 6 The Fall of Troy The fall of Troy was a tragedy. The once great city was destroyed, and many of its people were killed or taken as prisoners. Helen, too, was captured by the Greeks. When Menelaus found her, he was still angry, but his love for her had not faded. Some say that Menelaus wanted to kill Helen for leaving him, but when he saw her beauty again, he could not harm her. Instead, he took her back to Sparta, where they lived together once more. However, their life was not as happy as it had been before. The memory of the war and the loss of so many lives weighed heavily on them both. Chapter 7 Helen's Legacy Helen's story became a legend passed down through the generations. She was known as the face that launched a thousand ships because her beauty had caused such a great war. Some people blamed her for the destruction of Troy, while others believed she was just a pawn in the gods' plans. In the end, Helen's legacy was not just about her beauty, but about the power that beauty could hold over the hearts and minds of men. Her story serves as a reminder of the consequences of desire and the cost of war. And so Helen of Troy became one of the most famous figures in ancient history, a symbol of both love and tragedy.